Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank all my members, especially uh, some of the new members, uh, such as Anthony Tallarico, uh, Valen85, and John Nicole, as well as BOS Domestic Dispute. Your guys' support helps me get through uh, the summer, it gives me a more consistent income. Consider becoming a member today. Right, today I'm going to be doing another Factions compared. Uh, I'm going to be doing the battleships. You will have seen the poll from a few weeks back. So we're going to be looking at the various battleships of the different factions in order to find out which is best. Now, the criteria of this particular comparison is going to be a little bit different because with the attack ships one, they're all, you know, they're all attack ships and they're all kind of there to do the same thing um, with slight variations. With the battleships, they're all much more influenced by individual doctrine and requirements. So it's going to be an interesting um, interesting comparison. So let's get into it. So let's go through the different ships and just give it a little bit of context. So uh, first, of course, is the Gemidar battleship. Then, of course, there's the Dediridex, which is actually the oldest. Uh, the Sovereign, which is certainly probably the most advanced. And then the Negvar and the Hutet, which are both, I'll just say very quickly, they're both built as rivals of the Galaxy class. This is just a little bit of context for the various differences between them. So the first category I really want to get into, it's less of a scoring category, but it's tonnage. And this is because it gives us a lot of context. So a ship with, you know, getting top points on tonnage is going to have better durability. But it's also obviously going to suffer in speed and maneuverability at sublight. So the reason I bring up tonnage is it's a good way of setting context for all of these. And by looking at the tonnage, you can infer toughness and speed and agility all in one category. So obviously, obviously taking the top spot in tonnage is the Jem'Hadar battleship. You can see with this scale comparison, it is not only enormous, unlike the Dediridex, it's very filled out. Next is the Dediridex. I was thinking maybe it would be dethroned by the Hutep, but the Dediridex does have a surprising amount of internal volume. Then coming in after that is the Hutet. It's coming in really as kind of a mid, middle range. And then below the Hutet is the Negvar. It's actually a little bit shorter than the Sovereign, but as you see, it's, very, it's a lot more bulky and heavy. And of course... Very much at the bottom is the Sovereign, which also means, therefore, it is the most agile. So that is essentially where we are with tonnage. Like I say, it's just there to give us a little bit of context. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is basic combat performance. Again, like I say, speed and agility already covered. So the first sets we're going to look at is uh, phasers or disruptors, you know, your beam weapons torpedoes, siege guns, and then the subsequent range and accuracy overall. So starting off with phasers and disruptors. So uh, Polaron phasers are very powerful. Certainly they're a little bit more powerful than uh, conventional Federation phasers, and the Dominion battleship is absolutely festooned in them. I There are no Alpha Cannon um sources but the beta cannon you know fan sources that i've seen i don't think are unreasonable so that takes the number one spot five points coming in at fourth place is the romulan de Duridex because those use romulan plasma disruptors which are incredibly powerful romulan plasma disruptors are very powerful especially at close ranges so of course you will feel that elsewhere now, coming in at number three, this is a bit of a tricky one, and that's the Hutet. Now, it really depends on how you want to uh, calculate this. So, just with its just with its sort of secondary battery of conventional spiral wave disruptors, spiral wave disruptors are pretty weak weapons. It would get about twenty six points, which is below pretty much everything else in the beam department but it actually takes 56 points and the reason being 
is that it carries six heavy spiral wave disruptors on the wings. Now, now, this is where it gets tricky. Because you could argue they are siege guns, and yes, they are siege guns. But, critically, the Hutet is middleweight. And also, they are long range, which means you can use them more effectively. It gets 56 points and would take the third spot in phaser firepower. Taking the number two spot is the Negvar. It has something like, I think, 18 disruptors. These are, you know, rapid firing weapons. It gets about 40 points, you know, withering barrage. Now, that leaves the Sovereign with only 36 points. So only somewhat behind the Negvar. That's not to say that the Sovereign is, is weak, but certainly it is the lightest in terms of overall armor. But it's also worth remembering, like I say, the Sovereign is designed very differently. They're all designed very differently. Uh, so coming up next is Torpedo Firepower. Now this is, you know, this could be an interesting category. So taking the number one spot is still the Jem'Hadar battleship, and we see that especially in episode Valiant. Um, so it takes five points. I don't think that's necessarily that controversial. Now, taking fourth place is the Hutet. Bear in mind, this is Rizal 3D's Hutet, the one that I used in hunting the Hutet. It is absolutely festooned in torpedo launchers. Absolutely festooned. Now, I did actually um, halve its score because it would have something like uh, 36 in total, but I actually halved its score because they are basic torpedo launchers. They are not pulse fire or multi-shot torpedo launchers or anything like that. So they are behind the standards of the time, but it just has a lot of them. Now, taking third place in the torpedo category is really quite respectable. And that is, of course, the Sovereign class. The Hutet got 12 points. Sovereign got 10 points. The real difference maker for Sovereign is, of course, quantum torpedoes make a huge difference. Had this been based on the later Nemesis refit, then maybe the Sovereign would have inched ahead, but I'm talking about the Dominion War iteration, so what we see in Insurrection, effectively. Then coming in um, with two points is the Dedurdex. Again, not really surprising. The Dedurdex was really built before modern torpedoes really took off. It has, I think, three launchers at most. It gets nine points. But they are plasma torpedoes, which are pretty potent things. Again, especially at short range. And then coming in trailing with only one point in this category is the Negvar. It has, I think, a handful of torpedo launchers. I think about five torpedo launchers, and they're just basic photon torpedoes. They're certainly respectable and capable, but torpedoes are not really the thing for the Klingons, especially in the modern day. Now, that brings us to another category, and that is siege guns. Again, surprising really no one, taking the number one spot with five points is, of course, the Jem'Hadar battleship. So, for context, what are the siege guns? Uh, those brace pieces you see on the wings between the main sort of center of mass and the engines, those gray points, those are siege guns. They're big. They're about 600 meters. They're big siege guns. Now, what's the chances of it ever hitting a ship with that? Probably very small, but a stationary target... Uh, you're in for a really bad day. I don't think that's at all controversial. Coming in with four points is the Negvar. We see these siege guns in use. They are very effective, especially at close range. Now, again, I didn't include it in its beam weapon scoring because it's shown to be very inaccurate and very low velocity. Possibly with good tactics, the Negvar could be able to use it, especially on larger ships, but the rounds are simply too slow. Then coming in with three points, this is probably going to be a bit of a surprise in terms of its siege capability, it's the Sovereign. And the main reason I give the Sovereign three points is because of, well, the quantum torpedoes. Quantum torpedoes are incredibly powerful and they are meant to take out large targets 
like Borg cubes. So they're absolutely perfect for using on large structures and stations and fortifications. What a quantum torpedo would do to a planet's surface doesn't bear thinking. Coming in then with two points. This might be a bit harsh, maybe, but it's it's the Hutet. I know I did show it being used in a siege role, and certainly it's capable. All of these ships are capable. Because those guns are not only intended for a siege role, but also for potential of anti-ship warfare, they kind of compromise their capability of both. Then coming in with a mere one point in this category is the Didyridex. It simply wasn't built for siege warfare. It's built for deep space combat. So that takes us to the final part of the category, and that is range and accuracy. It refers not only to the fire control systems available to the ship, but it's also going to refer to the actual weapon's ability to reach. So taking five points in this category, I don't think is at all controversial. It's going to be the Sovereign. Starfleet phasers are very long range and Starfleet fire control is incredible. Again, also think about torpedo guidance. Starfleet torpedoes are very good at tracking targets. Coming in with four points, I have to be fair, is the Hutet. Because the heavy guns of the Hutet are partially designed for that anti-ship role and at close range it will struggle to maneuver to get them into arc. They're better at long range. It has a fire control system that does benefit from long range. Remember, Cardassians don't really like close range. They're not mo they're not particularly maneuverable, nor their weapons particularly powerful. They need to be able to consistently strike the targets at arm's length. Following close behind is the Jem'Hadar battleship. Reasonable range, but as we see on many occasions, the Jem'Hadar do are perfectly comfortable getting up close in the nitty gritty. Mid range, I don't think is unfair. Coming in then with two points, purely just because it's a, it is armed with beam weapons, the Duridex. They're plasma weapons, they don't really do very well at range. The D Duridex, yes, you can, you know, they're beam weapons, so you can uh, push at further ranges, but they're not going to be nearly as powerful as they are at close range. And of course, with one point, because it's all pulse weapons, is the Negvar. Klingon weapons are very short range and they like it that way. That brings us to the end of the tactical category. So the points as they stand. The Jem'Hadar battleship takes 18 points. The Duridex takes 9 points. Hutet takes 13. The Negvar takes 8. And the Sovereign takes 11. So apart from the Dominion battleship, they're all pretty closely grouped okay so now we're going to be moving more into strategic slash performance so the first one we're going to look at is warp speed taking the top position is the sovereign the sovereign is an incredibly perform it's, it's a performance ship it's a fast battleship so i think it's perfectly fair to say that it would take five points. Now taking four points, but Jem'Hadar ships have always shown to be reasonably um, capable of matching Federation ships. So the Jem'Hadar battleship takes four points. The Negvar then takes three points. We have plenty of reason to think that it's certainly not a slouch for its time. It seems to get around perfectly well. Two points is the Hutet. Cardassian warp technology it's always improving, always getting better. Uh, it's a bit difficult to compare it to others because Cardassian warp systems are very differently are built very differently. So it's really hard to get a real bearing on what its actual speed would be. With only one point is the Romulan de Duridex. It is stated to be slow to put that at the bottom. It's also the oldest. Next up is range. How far can the ship go on one tank of petrol? Now... You know me, and you know my biases, and you know my head cannon. So with five points in this category is the Duridex. It can go everywhere on one tank. There is no petrol tank for it to empty. Taking four points is the Gemini battleship. And you might say, well, that's a bit overpowered, you know. 
Things are already pretty potent in combat, and there you are giving in another four points. Now, that is purely because uh, you see on the 3D model those grey pods lashed to the underside of the wings. Those are external fuel tanks, specifically so that the Dominion battleship can undertake long-range deep space operations, much like the Romulan de Duridex does, because that's what it's built to engage. Three points in range. It's got to be the Sovereign. It's a new, efficient warp drive. If we were saying a Galaxy class, we might be looking at something very different, but the Sovereign is, I think, very fast, but also efficient. Uh, then coming in with two points is the Hutet. It is meant to get around. It is meant to be pretty mobile and go off even on its own, potentially. Then coming in with only one point is the Negvar. Uh, mostly just because... Again, Klingon ships don't really need a huge amount of range. They are going to pick up fuel supplies as they go, as best they can. They're not going to worry too much about long range, so much as speed and all of that good stuff. So the Negvar takes only one point in range. Next category is capability, and this covers a whole number of different categories, such as command and control, the ability to perform reconnaissance or scouting, how independent is it? Can it go off and do frigate duty by itself? Can it be a transport ship? And how many auxiliary craft uh, bring with it? So, there's a lot of numbers there to crunch. In terms of capability, again, you might say a bit overpowered, but bear in mind the tonnage. Jem'Hadar battleship takes five points. It's huge. It's built as a command ship. It's got a, re thanks to those fuel tanks, it's got a reasonable degree of independence and can certainly fight off small attackers by itself. Uh, it can transport, I reckon, about 5,000 troops. I don't think that's unfair. And I think it was perfectly capable of taking a fair number of fighters. Now, coming in with four points in capability is the Duridex. It's not really so much built as a command and control ship, so leave that aside. It's very good for reconnaissance and scouting. It can go off and be independent. It's also large and can transport huge numbers of troops, about 4,000. It's a very good mobile base. It can carry not only small auxiliary craft like fighters and shuttles, but it can even carry smaller Romulan scout ships and escorts. Now, coming in with three points in capability is the Hutet. Again, it was built for command and control. Can go off and be independent. Didn't really end well for it, but it can. It can also carry about 3,000 troops, and it carries about 35 uh, fighters and bombers. Then taking two points, the Sovereign, reasonable at command and control. It's reasonably good for uh, scouting. It's very good at being an independent operator. Uh, we don't know so much about how many troops it can transport. I doubt it's many, and it has about 16 auxiliary craft. Finally, the Negvala only takes one. Not really built for command and control, it can do it, but it kind of delegates that task to command watchers. Too big and heavy to be that effective when recon or scouting. Remember, it's sharing that fleet with uh, Burrells and watchers that can do it much better. Nor is it really meant to go off and be independent. It can transport about 2,700 troops, which is pretty good. Uh, but it only has about 14 auxiliary craft. I did look. Not much in the way of capability. Uh, the final category here is going to be high speed endurance. We're also looking at how long can it hold that top speed for. Taking five points is, of course, the Sovereign. Top of the line. Advanced. Groundbreaking technology. Four points is the Negvar. Because it's a quad nacelle ship, it can sustain those high speeds for far longer. Taking three points is the Hutet. Bit similar, it's got the quad fin, quad tail fin design, which helps improve field stability. Then taking uh, two points in high speed endurance is the Jem'Hadar battleship, because it is technically quad nacelles. You have those dorsal nacelles up top and the bigger nacelles at the bottom, so they can sustain a field. It's not going to be the same kind of high-speed endurance. And then at the very bottom is the D-Duridex. And again, that's hardly surprising. It's not built for high performance.
It's just built to sneak its way a long way away. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the kind of performance slash capability category. So coming in with 15 points, actually, we've got a tie. And that is a tie between the Sovereign and the Jem'Hadar battleship. Then coming in with 11 points is the Dediridex. Then with 10 points, the Hutet. And then close behind, with 9 points, the Negvar. That brings us to our total scores, but before I get to those total scores, I'll just have a little look at the vote, at what you guys said. So with 51% of the vote is the Sovereign class, Federation bias, hardly surprising, but I can understand it. Taking 26% was the Jem'Hadar battleship, certainly made an impression, very strong. Then with 11%, is the Negvar, followed very closely with 10%, the Dediridex, and then finally, with only 3% of the vote, the poor old, much maligned Hutet. Make Cardassia great again. So, it's an interesting, interesting poll, so we'll see how it compares. So, coming in, overall, with 33 points, it's the Jem'Hadar battleship. It's enormous. Like I say, if you want to get a you know feel for capability and for its strength, for its value, pound for pound, divide it by five. And any of these, divide them by their tonnage. Then coming in with 26 points is the Sovereign. So switch those first two around in the, mem in the uh, poll and you guys would have been right. Sovereign came in with 26 points. Very respectable. Then with 23 points is the Hutet. And then with 20 points is the Dediridex. You know, it's very good, but it is an older model. And then finally, 17 points is the Negvar. Again, apart from the Dominion Battleship, which is huge... These are close margins. It's similar to, you know, the fighter, to the attack ship uh, video. These are all close margins and close competitions. But there are just certain areas in which certain ships have an edge and don't in others. And they maybe just don't make up in other areas. There may be other elements that I haven't considered, other factors. So if you want to share those factors, make sure you do in the comments below. Because there's definitely more that I could have covered, but, you know... These tend to be long videos. I mean, this thing is... Bugger me. Uh, <laughs> these are long videos. So, this has gone on long enough. And I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, like I say, leave your comments and thoughts and all of that. I'll see you next time. <laughs>